Are we ready? <laughs> what in God's name <laughs> am I going to do with this? <laughs> Are you shit? <laughs> oh my God. <It's> awesome. <laughs> really? <laughs> goodness um well hello everybody um i'm brian stevens with the national real estate post and mortgage shots uh the reason i have a grovelly voice is it's been a long three days we had a bunch of top producing loan officers from around the country uh, coming to little vacaville california for a few days of getting together and trying to do some marketing ideas that are fantastic and outside of the box and i think we accomplished that i think it's going to be interesting to see um you guys all know as loan officers that there are you know, uh, great adopters, good adopters, bad adopters. So when I reflect on what we did, I, 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 of course I think about the things that we could have done better or differently. We should have done this on Friday, but you know, that's beside the point. I think we did some things good, but I look back and I think that um, there's about 20% of the people who are gonna really get it and run with it, and 50% that don't. Uh, you guys agree that's how the industry goes, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pretty much. So over the last three days, um, there's, I don't want to talk about you know what our little thing that we're doing together, but what's the takeaway that you guys got from the last three days? Maybe that uh, you didn't see before. Anything? Anybody? Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah push your boundaries a little bit every time. Push Just keep boundaries. pushing your comfort level every time. And the consistency. Right. Yeah. Consistent. Right. Yeah. Right. Consistency is key when it comes to marketing. Um, of anything, not just video. No. Whatever you're going to adopt in your marketing style, whatever tools, tips, tricks that you're picking up, because obviously that stuff's coming at you a million times a day, how many people are soliciting this software or this coaching or whatever. So whatever it is you're going to adopt and make your own, be consistent with it. So um, Adam, your marketing that you do, so I know you, you do real big volume. I mean, really impressive numbers. If you were to if you were to distill it down to one thing, if you're talking with a new LO out there, saying this is the thing, that you, and, and just let's push the marketing thing aside that we just did, but just in general, if you were to give what you think to be the most vitally important tip to a new loan officer or a new realtor, really somebody who's you know, getting into sales, what would you tell them? Call everybody. Call everybody. Pick up the phone and call everybody. What, what, what would you say? Probably the same thing. Like when I got into the industry, that's exactly how I started. I called every person I knew and told them what I was doing and how I could help them. And then I listened to what their needs were and just started writing it down. Right. But you know what's so funny about you guys saying that? How, how often are you guys actually on the phone now? All the time. All the time. All the time? Still doing it. Yeah. How many, is this, anybody here, how many hours a day do you think you spend on the phone? Uh, enough to where I'm very glad that that the minutes are no longer billed individually. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, are you talking about like marketing or just for I'm, business? I'm, general? I'm talking, you know, just hard, just dialing, just prospecting. Dialing. Yeah, prospecting. Yeah. Talk, yeah. yeah, not responding to maybe not you know kind of responding to calls, but making outgoing, forward-thinking calls. How often are you doing that? Right. Not enough. <laughs> not enough. I mean, a couple of hours a week, but it should really should be more. Yeah, I've got a time block. It's two hours a day, every day, consistently. Two and a half. Yeah. Monday yeah. through Thursday, two and a half hours a day. See, I think time blocking is totally important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, does everybody do that? Oh, happy, yeah. happy success is a well-oiled calendar. I was talking with an LO, one of these uh, interviews I did, a guy down in Florida. He said uh, two years ago he probably spent um, you know a few hours a week on marketing. He says they spend a few hours a day on marketing now, and his, his business has doubled. Do you guys find yourself dealing with back end, you know, work that you're doing where you're you know running down, you know, conditions and shit like that, uh, versus prospecting? What's what's your ratios? Sometimes, you know, it, it, I'd say that it probably depends on you know the situation and the client. But usually, if you've got your systems in place, you hopefully don't have to be doing that, the back end piece, where you can be you know out front doing the marketing, being the front person, originating love. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You introduce the team to your client and right. explain to the client. This is how it works at my practice. I do this part. 
then so and so at my office is going to take it. You know, so far you can be working with different people all the way along the way. See, even that shit's easier said than done. I had an that's assistant. I, I hired course, an assistant. Yeah. yeah, I didn't say it was easy. Yeah. I said yeah. that's what that's what we try to do. Right? Does everyone here have an assistant? Yes. 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 So three, and they're no. the key. If yeah. if you don't have one, it's see what I always had a problem with with my assistant is I just um, I I trained horribly. You know, it was kind of like I could just get this out of the way. I mean, that was always my hardest part. So now, of those who have assistants, what's the training and hiring process for you? So I think, you know, it's really, if you're doing decent business, having an assistant is vital. I think it's absolutely important, but just hiring somebody is, you know, that's not necessarily what you need to do. So getting that assistant and actually getting them in place, I mean, what's the process? You know, I was speaking with uh, years ago with Carl White, and you guys have probably heard this as well. He said, um, he goes, you know, so you try to do your stuff, you know, 100%. So if you, your, what you do and how you do it, you do 100% of it good. That's the thinking. Now, if you did it 80%, would that be good enough? And in most cases it is. So the concern with an assistant is they're not going to ever be able to do it as good as you believe you're doing it. But is it good enough? When in truth, because we bring our own biases to the table, you know, when I reflect on who I am, well, I already have my opinions of that, and you always try to do the right thing. When in truth, your assistant could actually do stuff better than you. Some would you agree with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In some yeah. cases. Absolutely. So, yeah, I was going to say, one of the things that I did when I, I hired my, my assistant, who's my rock, uh, my right hand, is I had her read Chad Prio's book, uh, The School of Get Shit Done. Taking Perfect Action. Imperfect Action. And, and I actually told her, I said, listen, um, this business is about timing, and we got to look at files from the back, and things have to get done. And if you take too much time wondering if you're making the right decision and not just getting it done, then we're not going to get files done. We're going to have unhappy customers, unhappy, unhappy agents. I would rather have you just get stuff done and we'll learn from mistakes. And I said, you know, you are going to make mistakes, and you're probably going to make mistakes that are going to cost me hundreds or thousands of dollars as a team, but you're not going to make that same mistake again. And, and we're going to grow from it. And uh, so she read that book day one. That was her. That was day one of the job. I mean, every experience is a learning one. And obviously, <coughs> the way I look at it is, if, if I'm right 70 percent of the time and I'm wrong 30 percent of the time, I'm still growing. Right. Which right. means that I'm still moving forward. I'm still getting things done. But you know, it may cost you time, effort, money sometimes. But at least you know, long term, you're going to have a better result. Right. <clears throat> By the way, I haven't read Chad's book, but I love that idea of imperfect action. Uh, because if you if you're unwilling to fail, you're don't you think you're unwilling to grow? Right. You know because you're only going to grow through trial and error, and yeah. you're going to fail. If you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. Right. right. Very common in the video marketing stuff. Totally. People yeah. will perfect is the enemy people will try to make it right. perfect before they'll actually do it, and they never get there. It's all paralysis analysis. I mean, obviously you're analyzing it to paralysis, and you're not getting anywhere. So the, the key is just to do it. Yeah, no I always. I, what's that? No one bats a thousand, but you get back to the plate. Well, yeah, that's that's really the idea, isn't it? And I, everybody knows that, but not everybody does it. I even find myself at points. You know, if you're if you're not constantly and actively thinking about this stuff, um, you can start to get into these routines, these and redundancies, and it's just not a it's not a good or a healthy place to be. Um, who who here feels? Well, like, since you brought it up, sure. Um, I think our mo is really part of Carl White's heart um, of that strategy. Um, hire and fire very quickly. I mean, if in the first couple of weeks you even have a fleeting thought that they're not going to work out, move along. Um, but what we do is every time we hire somebody, we sit down together and on a giant marker board that all our clients see, we write out the tasks that everybody does every day. And in the two giant columns at either end, in the middle we write everybody's name. And then we just draw a line. This is now your task. This is your task. This is your task. And maybe you have to teach that task one time. I have to tell my transaction assistant how I want thank you cards written to real estate agents. But I only have to show her one time. And that's her task on every transaction, no matter what. So is it more important to have an assistant for the marketing wing of what you do or an assistant for the processing end of what you do? What, who do you hire first? Well, a little bit of both. Well, Processing. I don't have an assistant, so I'm doing all the work <coughs> right now. Um, even while here at the event, just working at the same time, 
for me, I mean, it's all dependent on what you have going on. I'm going to need someone for the processing side of things because with the military, I got annual training and I'm going to be gone for two or three weeks. So I need someone back in the office worrying about the files while I'm there um, doing the training that I need to do. So that's that's my perspective on that. You know, it's a, if I, so I forget who I heard say this, but they were talking about how a loan is a very linear process. You know, it's you start here, you end there. You know, what do you do first? You speak to the person. I mean, if you broke it down to minutia, what do you do from there? You, you know, you fill out your 10 to 3. What do you do from there? And you go down every single step. And as long as you keep that linear process, it's virtually impossible to fail. And you, you've got a nice breakout that you were sharing, actually, of how things happen on a, on a file basis and who's assigned to things. Uh, well, and that's part of that yeah. marker board yeah. strategy that, you know, one person pulls credit reports on every file. It doesn't deviate. One person chases conditions on every file. It doesn't deviate. Um, so, yeah, it works really well. But I guess the general MO right now, and your answer is almost impossible to answer, we're loan originators. Originating business is job number one. Should you get help with that first? I don't know. Um, as Carl describes it, identify the things you don't like or don't make you any money, and that's where you hire. Right. Um, I have three, and we refer to them as front, middle, and back, essentially. I have one that helps me with the marketing and prospecting, the one that you guys have all met. Uh, some of you have met Di. She does all the back end, uh, compliance, broker packages, keep my license in check, those kinds of things. And then one that strictly handles app to close, that just does transactional business. Um, so I couldn't tell you because it's been growth over a long period of time where I would have hired first. It just was somebody, I mean, it was Di, but it was somebody who handled a little bit of all of those things. But I think if we're answering the question in black or white, which is almost impossible, we're loan originators. I think originating business is priority number one. That's where you get your help. Right. I agree. Steve Brand, yeah. what's the craziest shit you've ever seen happen on a file? <laughs> Come on, what's the craziest uh, thing? Last, uh, last year I actually uh, closed a new purchase transaction on a house on a Monday. Uh, had a, uh, a veteran move into a house in Massachusetts. On Wednesday morning at about 2.30 in the morning, the house burned down. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, we still, I believe, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hey, by the way, uh, Johnny and Lindsay, come over here, man. We're just going live yes. and hanging out. I think, that, uh, <coughs> we, I think we still have that file. Uh, yes, we do. On uh, on our own books, we were we didn't sell it before the fire. So, so when did it burn in the process? <laughs> did you close on it? We're, it's it's like it's been fourteen months, fifteen. Months. You funded you? No, we funded the loan on oh. Monday. House burned down on Wednesday. So so they've been living in a hotel for <laughs> over a year. They're making their mortgage payment on a house oh, shit. that's burned down, that's in the process of getting rebuilt, and they're living in a hotel. So they're making a payment on that insurance. Their insurance is paying for them to be in a hotel. I had it for a good one. Oh god! <laughs> I, I had one. His name was this guy's name was I remember it was Scott Johnson. He was, turned out to be a super cool guy. He bought a house um, over in Winters. It's like twenty miles away, and it was a two story house. He did his walkthrough with his real estate agent. They went and flushed the toilets and did all that shit, right? Um, they flushed the toilet and it cycled and the water kept coming up and coming up. <laughs> but they left. Oh, geez. oh no! You know that was in the walkthrough. They had left and locked up, and he went. Um, he went on a business trip for two weeks. So that water <laughs> ran in his house the day he got. He did his walkthrough and locked the door and went on a business trip. And he had water running on the second floor for two wow. weeks. Wow. I just had that just in November. <laughs> New construction. Valve broke on a toilet, wiped out the whole townhouse. Now there the builder stepped up, no insurance was involved, and, and later that day they had the whole inside of the house ripped out and rebuilt the whole house. Oh them. my god. What about you? Uh, crazy stories. Let's hear some. Things that you've ran across on files. Oh, this one's easy. My God, I could sit here yeah. and talk about it all day. So, you know, the best one I had is actually, you know, we were talking the other day about a Kawasaki. Uh -huh. I had exactly that's the thing that happened to me. So we're going to closing. Um, three days before, we're doing a soft pull on it. Guess what? Somebody went out and bought a Kawasaki. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. And oh, yeah. So, I mean, you're going to closing. You're thinking that everything's fine. Three days, you pull it. Hey, by the way, mind telling us that you maybe bought a new motorcycle? 
That's just at least by a car, then you can live right? in it. Right. <laughs> 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 not living motorcycles. Living in a motorcycle. motorcycle. Yeah. Unless you live out here, yeah. maybe. We had one recently. The sellers, a divorcing couple, pretty ugly. Uh, the wife, or soon to be ex-wife, left the country, gone like a fart in the wind. Nobody ever heard from her. She didn't show up at closing. Never closed. Really? Yeah. Wow. It never wow. closed. Oh, wow. I, I I heard the story one time. Uh, Sina, who's a local home builder here. Um, a, a generational thing, and it's an interesting out in the city of Clayton. Sino built, he built the whole city of Clayton, and then there's a hill in the middle of the city, and he built his mansion on oh, top man. of that hill. <laughs> it's like the castle overlooking, you know, it's this big grassy hill, you know. And I always thought to myself, what a smug shit thing to do, you know, just looking down on the minions. And I figured, with a couple perfect place bottle rockets in about mid June, we could put that whole house up in fire. Nobody would ever find it. The whole hill just. <laughs> <laughs> but one of his houses that he did, he built a house, and I don't know if you know this, but when you hang um, cabinets, your cabinets are only hung by a couple of screws up top, you know, and they, you don't even screw the bottom because the weight will keep them down. Lady bought, she had her house, and she was doing something on her counters, banging on it, and it knocked these giants' cabinet cabinets loose with her arms. Snapped both of her arms. Oh. Oh. Snapped them both in a brand new house. Mr. Cena. Now, Mr. Cena, the old guy, was actually really cool. It was all the descent, the rich descended shitheads of his that like it, people didn't like. That old man, he wa he was at her house with a deed the next day. Here, really? You, oh yeah, here. Sign this that you're not going to sue me, and you just got your house. You can have the house. Yeah, four hundred thousand dollars house. She signed it. But there's always goofy stuff going on. And you know the whole thing is... Did she sign it with a pen in her mouth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't get to sign it. Sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, but you're talking about how people are, are buying shit at the last second. Do you guys... How often do you guys talk to your clients and your realtors? Do you tell your realtors about that? Like, what do you tell your realtors that they need to know? Um, because when you said somebody bought a Kawasaki, I know for a fact everybody in the room has that story. It's a Kawasaki by another name. Right. It's a refrigerator. It's a what? I told you ten times. Why the fuck did you do this type of thing, right? Yep. So this is something that you would hope that most of your real estate agents know, right? Yes. What are the things that you consistently convey to your real estate agents to avoid these problems? Do you have like a list of things when you yeah, talk to well, them? Or? One of the things that happens in my market sometimes is after the appraisal is done, we've eliminated most, if not all, of the conditions. You know, the closing is is imminent. It's coming. Uh, the buyers will get back into the house. They just want to measure it up, make sure you know what couch goes where, or can they put this piece of furniture in that room, or whatever. Tell the real estate agent, make sure they're not taking those measurements to For the furniture store. Furniture. <laughs> they cannot buy it. They want to measure it. That's great, but don't go to the furniture store and buy anything. You have to remind them, you know, because right. same as a Kawasaki, they're going to the furniture store. Doesn't matter that it's zero percent interest for six months or you know twelve months or whatever. It's going to show up on the, you know, double check, you know, the soft pull of your credit report before closing. But it has no payments for six months, and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. <laughs> so, so, Tony Ray, so we have Tony Ray from Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you look for when you're when you're thinking, uh, when you talk to your real estate agents that you're working with? What is it that you're looking for in a lender? Like, what, who do you want to work with? Is it personality based, or do you have things that are more important or less important? Uh, well, so we have. My team has three realtor, uh, three uh, loan officers that we work with, and the criteria for us in our city is local. That they have to be local with local underwriters, and we want local appraisers. That that stops a lot of problems for the transaction right off the bat. But we also look for a, a really good reputation by that LO, and um, and then personality is a lot of it. We have certain LOs that can only do certain things in certain sections of town. So it, it's I know it's going to be. If it's a loft, for example, I have one person that can do lofts, and nobody else will touch them. So we're just very careful to guide the client to the one we think is one a fit for them, and um, based on personality, but yeah, based on the the loan officer's criteria. And and on that on that stuff that you were talking about, loan officers, I don't think that's really the loan officer's job. I think that's our job, and we've as an industry have dropped the ball because we have real estate agents that are training like they should be. So our good real estate agents will have a full conversation before they get to an LO about all the things they need to do and not do in that transaction, like not touching credit, not doing those kind of things. And we, so we teach them that before they get to our LOs. So we have those conversations with them as well. 
But here's the problem from that eligible that, that's here's, a, You're in the minority. You're right. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Yeah. Right. You should be sharing the do's and don'ts, but you're probably one of Right. Yeah, and and, and I, get, I totally get this yeah. because yeah. there's I have to deal with those same real estate agents as everybody else does, and when I see one of the top real estate agents that are running a business as a business, I'm thrilled. Our team gets very excited. It's like, oh, it's going to be so and so, yay! You know, this is going to be a smooth transaction for everybody, and we all do that. So, but and I get that whole side of it. Here's this is embarrassing. This is going to be embarrassing right now. What I'm 